You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Thank you again for joining this week. Uh, if you're here for Cat McNamara, I think it's a really great interview and you're going to have a lot of fun. And if you like the interview, I ask you to stick around and subscribe and help this little podcast out. Write a review, subscribe. The um, the handles on Instagram and Twitter, Ryan. Uh, Twitter is at Inside of You Pod and uh, Instagram and Facebook is <laughs> Inside, Inside of, of You Podcast. Podcast. Very simple. What guys. happened? So, uh, so check us out. Write a review. And uh, support the podcast so it keeps going. And we'd like to keep going. We like the podcast. And a lot of folks are, are digging it. So hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll like this uh, this interview. A few things. I want to just uh, pump up the Animal Rescue Mission. I am on the board. Uh, the Animal Rescue Mission rescues, rehabs, and finds forever homes for abused and neglected animals. Uh, if you want to donate, just go to the Animal Rescue Mission.org. The Animal Rescue Mission.org. Also, if you want to uh, donate to the Ronald McDonald House, I love them. Uh, they're an amazing, amazing organization. Go to also go to echoesofhope.org if you want to support foster youth um, and food on foot. Uh, I'm a board member on all these things for the most part. Um, foodonfoot.org and help the homeless crisis. Uh, in Los Angeles or around the world. I, I wish there were more food on foots. Um, I want to thank everybody for listening again. And uh, if you want any cool merch, go to the Inside You Online store. We've got great stuff, Smallville stuff, lunch boxes, and blah, blah, blah. There's, just take a look at it. Go to the Inside You Online store. If you want to make any bookings or uh, Zoom bookings, go to sunspin.com. That's the band's website. That's my new band. Not my new, but I keep saying my new band. It's my it's our second album it's coming out in september so hopefully you'll like it keep looking for it it's coming out soon and uh support that um what else can i say i mean i'm uh, the cons are done for a while i mm -hmm. don't have any cons until november december i'm going to columbus and uh pittsburgh and san francisco so if you're out of cons it must be only pros then only pros no more cons in this man's world you know the uh the i feel like the anxiety today is is better it's a little bit better. So maybe, um, you know, I'm talking to my guy tomorrow and uh, I'm just hoping this, I, I just rebound from this. It's it's a struggle, man. Anxiety is a struggle, boy. And this is probably the worst anxiety I've had in a while. So anybody out there suffering from anxiety, the, you, you know, get help and uh, it will get better. I'm getting better. And uh, it was, it was tough, man exercise go for walks i know you don't want to do it i know your body doesn't want to do it you're tired you just want to lie down that's depression <laughs> you know that's that's what i i deal with and uh so i'm just rooting for you guys as i know hopefully you're rooting for me great guest today kat mcnamara uh what can i say about her this is her second time or third time on uh she's got the new show walker independence She's got Arrow to talk about. She's got a lot to talk about. I love her Instagrams, her posts. Um, they're full of life. She is a, a fascinating young lady. I sound like I'm an old man. Hey, she's a fascinating young lady. <laughs> just, just fascinating, Ryan. I, I admire her uh, tenacity. I admire her. her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Sorry. It's been a... Uh, a long morning, and uh, we love you. But without further ado, stick around for the top tier. Oh, uh, of course, join Patreon to support the podcast. I forgot to mention that. Uh, I'll message you after you join. It's patreon.com slash inside of you. And without further ado, let's get inside of Catherine McNamara. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. We'll have to get the Walker family in one day and just do a combo episode. You just jumped right in with the Walker family. <laughs> I love this. I mean, I just interviewed Jared Padalecki. I saw. We were talking about you. Did you listen? I, I heard bits and pieces. I mean, I think Twitter was just a flutter. Yeah. At any mention of, of <laughs> this new show. Anytime you get those supernatural Walker boys on. It's true. I guess it wouldn't be Walker boys. It would be Walker boy. The Walker. Well, the Walker. The Walker. Yeah. The Walker. Is, I think. Is Walker that successful? I mean, it's got to be successful if they're doing a prequel to it. I think it's, there's so much to it. I mean, it is, you know, it's that, 
there's a familiar audience and it's it's that nostalgia that westerns bring out in people i think you know there's such a familiarity to it but it with the sort of resurgence of westerns right now it provides such a great opportunity to take a genre that everyone thinks they know and make it new and make it fresh and i think you know the the new walker's been able to do that in a really cool way with what jared's done with his show and now taking it back to the 1870s we're able to do that all over again um and sort of be in the universe but, but very much our own our own entity did you were you watching a lot of walker did you have to watch a lot of walkers to to sort of get ready for this i mean did you even audition for this prequel so guys oh, if yeah. you're listening She's obviously doing this prequel <laughs> to the show Walker that Jared Padalecki is on, and she's doing the prequel, which takes place in the 1800s. Now, I'm thinking this is the season season three of Walker? I think so, yeah. So it's that successful where all of a sudden they're like, let's do a prequel. I mean, Smallville yeah. was super successful. Why didn't they do a prequel? I guess we were the prequel because it was Smallville <laughs> was before they became Superman. But that's, yeah, that exactly. shows a lot of uh, a lot of love for the show. Oh, absolutely. And what's what's what I get a kick out of is, you know, as far as the CW goes, the last time I spoke to you, I was playing Stephen Amell's daughter, 20 years in the future. Right. And now in some other alternate universe, I'm playing Jared Padalecki's great, 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 great grandmother. And wow. I just, I think it's wonderful. <laughs> There's some multiverse where, you know, that exists. And if someone can explain to me that history, I'll take it. <laughs> Did you watch every episode of walker to prepare have you seen all the seasons every episode like just to, not that it matters because you're before it yeah. so you don't really have to pay attention to anything <laughs> if it was me i would like this doesn't relate to me I'm, I'm i'm before this well no similarly to you know when i when i jumped onto arrow i watched all six at that point six seasons that were in existence oh, to sort of see so what long. steven and what emily had done to create that relationship and those characters to be you know the spawn thereof right. of elicity as it were um but for this i i wanted to get a feel for the world and for what the walker family represented and so i did i watched a good deal of it and also you know being a massive supernatural fan and I'm Keegan Allen's one of my oldest friends in LA. So I love Keegan. You know, he was on a podcast. Him. He was he's great. He's such a good dude. He's such yeah. a great it it scares me when I meet people that are so kind that I'm like, are they really like that? Is he really yeah. that good of a dude? He is. Because I'm interviewing he him, is. I'm like, I love you. <laughs> and and then I'm like, he can't be that sweet. There's gotta be some catch. Yeah, but, but not. just in talking to, no, and I, I had a conversation with, you know, a couple of folks very early on. And the biggest thing that spoke to me about, you know, the Walker family and the Walker franchise is that there's so much love in it and there's so much kindness in it and just good people that want to make good television and tell good stories. And that to me is why I'm here in the first place. And so, you know, to, to be a part of something that has such goodwill surrounding it, it's, it's a real gift. Because as you know, we spend the majority of our lives, you know, 17 hour days, slogging through whatever it is, doing what we love. Yeah. But if you don't love the people you work with, it it's an extra bit of effort. And it just, it yeah. makes, it makes those days on set and all the hard work that every single person on set pours into it mean that much more when you love the people too. Do you notice when actors always say, you know, the hours that they work, it always gets longer and longer. It's like, I, we work 12 hours a day. We work 14, we're working 24 hours a day. <laughs> we work so hard, but the, yeah. the hours are long, especially in the beginning when you're shooting a series. I mean, what are your hours on the prequel and how many episodes have you done so far? We've only done one so far. We haven't gone back. We just got our series pickup and we're at Upfronts and did the whole thing, um, which was very exciting. But our hours, because most of our being, you know, a show that shoots outside, being an 1870s Western, most of our days are daylight dependent. So it's a lot of, and for, you know, for folks who aren't in this industry, um, you know, that means when the sun goes down, we're done for the day. Is that true? We can't do anything more. There's very few night shoots. Yeah, very it's few all... night shoots. We had, we had one or two days. I mean, that's a huge testament too, to, to Larry Tang, who was our director of this pilot, who uh, laid out, we had eight days to shoot this thing. And he did the whole thing in uh, eight or nine days. I forget because it all blurs together. But he laid out this massive undertaking and made it a dream of a process by just the way that he was able to put the days together and the way that they were able to shoot things between our first AD, our director of photography, and him. It was it was honestly such a dream. I'm so, so happy that we're keeping this family together and taking it to series. 
And this is the, is this the second time on a series you've had a lead role? Yeah, it is. This is uh, Shadowhunters was the first time I was sort of thrust into this position at 19 years old, not doing what I'm doing. But in that that show taught me how to make television because I was surrounded by such an incredible cast and such an incredible crew of people that, you know, were kind and amazing artists, but also willing to show me the ropes as someone mm-hmm. who wanted to learn. Um, and now you know, having those examples and and getting to watch Steven for a couple of years and getting to sort of work on a few other sets, going into another show as, I mean, I I play make-believe for a living. Am I really an adult? I don't know. But as as an adult <laughs> yeah. on paper, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, it's, it's nice to be able to try and bring some of that um, synergy and that that family idea to to a new show. I mean, you're the lead, right? <laughs> I am I am Abigail Walker. I mean, so, so it's the show is on your shoulders. So if it fails, <laughs> it's your fault. Thanks, Rosie. No, no, Thanks no. No, but honestly, <laughs> is, is, is that I guess my point was that I mean, I know you could handle it, but you know, we've talked about this in the past and I want to get into it again, but cuz you you don't really stress a lot. Do you think now that you have a lead role in this other series and it's very demanding and you're Abigail Walker, is it, do you feel any of the load? Do you feel the stress? Do you feel the, any anxiety? Are you getting, or are you doing all right? I, I'm doing all right. I would, I would say, I always think of it as a responsibility uh, more than a, a stressor or a pressure because, you know, obviously there is a lot riding, you know, for lack of a better horse pun <laughs> yeah. On, yeah, yeah, yeah. on this show and on this character. And, and there's a lot of expectation for it, but those are the sort of jobs that I love because it is a challenge and it is something that it forces me to rise to the occasion. Not that I wouldn't attempt to anyway, but it's exciting to, to be a part of a story that people want to see and that people are anticipating and they're excited to be a part of and excited to tell the story. And, you know, between the, the, Abigail Walker is one thing and she's a fantastic character and I'm, I'm so grateful and so lucky to get to play her, but she's not the only fantastic character in this story. You know, that's something that, that drew me to the script in the first place is that every single character, you, you look at them on the surface and you meet them for the first time and you think, you know, who they are and you think, you know, what you're going to get out of them. And then suddenly they present something entirely different that, you know, it takes all of these tropes that we know and love of Westerns and reinvents them and re-examines them and goes, well, this is what we know, but is that how the West actually was? And maybe there's more to the story. Is it complicated? Is it challenging on set to do? I mean, what are they asking you to do? What things can you tell me that you've done? Like in this pilot, (laughs) you're obviously riding horses, Yes, I'm riding horses. There's horses, there's shotguns, there's a 20 pound dress, there's a corset, there's, you know, and, and, you know, the heavy emotional trauma of having your, you know, as we see from the trailer, having your husband murdered in the first, you know, X amount of minutes of the pilot. That's what happens? Uh, Yeah. That's, well, you see that, you know, as, as we start, as you get to see the trailer, you, uh, Abigail Walker has set off with her husband into what she's assuming is going to be a fresh start and a new life out West. Um, She's from Boston and she and her husband have decided to take this journey. He's, you know, meant to be the sheriff and she is going to help him start this new life. Um, But her, you know, her entire, within the first X number of minutes of the show, her entire life, her entire world is torn apart and she is forced to, start anew. And and for a woman in the 1870s to be on her own and have nothing and no one and be a complete stranger in not only a new town, but a new world of the West, it's, it's daunting. But it takes a character like Abigail Walker, who has the education and the strength and the tenacity and the willingness to go you know what? No, I'm not going to let this defeat me. I'm going to embrace this. And she takes on this agency that you don't see a lot in women of that time. And she's also surrounded by a cast of characters, men and women alike, who recognize that agency and who give her the opportunity to exhibit that and to exert that in this new world. And it's such an exciting story to tell because it is so uncommon for a Western. There is no shrinking violet. There is no damsel in distress. There is no cowboy who cannot be beaten. There is no 
character that is truly good. There is no character that is truly bad. There is all shades of gray. And that's the most exciting thing is that no one comes out of the West unscathed. Is there some dark shit? There's some really dark stuff. Really? It's, we, we, we don't shy away from it. I mean, and that's what you get when you get, you know, a writer like Seamus and you get a director like Larry and you get this world where, I mean, we saw it with the pilot of Walker. You know, you saw what Jared's character went through in the pilot of that show within the first 15 minutes. It's, they don't shy away from putting these characters through. I mean, you saw what happened to Matt Barr's character at the end of his season of Walker. There's a reason that he's now on our show right. and not still on that one. You know, his the characters go through things. People die. Things change. The world is shattered. Right. You know, wagons go up in flames and... You're left with the ashes and having to rebuild. Inside of you is brought to you by Con Air. Uh, you know what? I hate going to the dry cleaners. I'm flying a lot, Ryan. I go all over the place, and my clothes are always wrinkled. But not anymore, Ryan. No, not anymore. <laughs> uh, the Con Air Turbo Extreme Steam, Steam and Iron 2-in-1. It's the most powerful handheld steamer. It's so easy to use and so small. You could pack it in your bag and travel with it, and you never have to worry about wrinkly, dinkly clothes. Not anymore. Fast and easy wrinkle removal. Extra large sole plate can be used vertical or horizontal. Also works without steam as a dry iron. Advanced heat technology is ready almost instantly and obliterates wrinkles with turbocharged dry steam. Four settings for delicate to turbo is perfect for all fabrics. Kills 99.9% .9 of all bacteria, sanitizes around the house, and refreshes clothing. Easy to use, great for at home or on the go. To get yours today, go to Amazon and search Conair Turbo Extreme Steam and look for the Steam and Iron 2-in-1. Inside of you is brought to you by Shopify. What would I do without Shopify? You know, I've been using Shopify since the beginning of this podcast, folks, to sell merch. And boy, do they make it easy. I don't, I can't imagine anyone else doing what they do. Uh, I can check out what sells really well, what's not selling, uh, up to date monthly uh, income. Uh, the list goes on. It's so easy to use. I can use this thing. Uh, I think when, when I first started, I think Shopify, I had a t-shirt and now I have like 30 or 40 items and it's so easy to manage. Thank you, Shopify. Uh, Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business. So upstarts, startups and established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales and effortlessly stay informed. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibility. Lightmine Shopify powers millions of businesses from first sale to full scale. Reach customers online and across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. Gain insights as you grow with detailed reporting of conversion rates, profit margins, and beyond. More than a store, Shopify grows with you. This is Possibility. Powered by Shopify. Shopify is more than a store. Connect with your customers, drive sales, manage your day-to-day. -day. Shopify instantly lets you accept all major payment methods. Go to shopify.com slash inside, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash inside right now shopify.com slash inside god it's got to be so cool my friend troy rudolph he's he lives in um where does he live now who gives a shit uh no he, <laughs> he, no, he lives in uh, oregon uh portland yeah he lives in portland but he's uh he's just, god i'm so jealous i want to be in a western had, had you ever been in a western or anything like this before no was it just no, totally like did you have to your mannerisms are they are they sort of too modern and sometimes they say oh you're very today we have to, you have to, is it, you have to learn how to be from that time period, right? Yeah. I mean, it's interesting for me. I grew up doing ballet. I grew up, you know, doing theater. So I'm very used to kind of 
figuring out different eras, as it were. And, you know, everyone calls me grandma anyway. I, I knit, I bake, and I drink scotch. I'm basically an 85-year-old in a 26-year-old body. It's just sort of who I am. Um, yeah. But it, it, it did take a bit of adjusting because, again, as you know, most of my characters in the last few years have been, you know, leather jackets, jeans, Kicking boots. ass. Yeah, you know, swords and arrows and kicking butt, not, you know, corset and a bustle and a giant skirt and being a Bostonian educated lady. Yeah. How long does it take you to get dressed in these dresses? How long does it take to put one of these things on? It, it doesn't take long. I, I have to give a huge shout out to the wardrobe team on our pilot. They built and found and sourced all of these amazing different pieces. My dress was built from, from head to toe. The, the first fitting I had, it was a bolt of fabric and a corset. And then by the time we got to set, it was all of these layers. But um, it's the first time I've actually had to have help getting dressed in the morning on set. <laughs> and it's a very different, it's a different world. But I... I sort of love it. You know, they, they gave me the option to not wear the corset and to just kind of cheat here and there. You will, for comfort, eventually. As it were. Yeah, eventually you'll say no corset. Everyone says that, but I got to say, it's it's a different posture and it forces you to stand differently and move differently and hold yourself differently. And ah. I'm a big fan of that. You know, it's the same with, with Arrow when you put on the super suit and you zip up that, you put on the hood and the mask. Or with Shadowhunters when we put on all the tattoos every day or, you know, when I did the stand and I dyed my hair pink. There's a, there's a difference and there's kind of a mask that you put on and you sort of go, oh no, that's the separation of, of me and Abby and me and this person and that person. And it, it just puts you in it more. Who are you really enjoying working with or who, who are most of your scenes with in this prequel? Uh, I, I was lucky because getting to be sort of the audience's eyes coming into the town of Independence, Texas and, and sort of entering this world. There's a, one of my favorite parts of the pilot is there's this series of scenes where Abigail meets every character for the first time. And you sort of get to see little glimmers of what these relationships could be and how diverse and, and vast this town is and how many different kinds of people have all settled here. And that's, that's I think, the most beautiful thing that's sort of perhaps the biggest allegory for our world today that has to do with this story is that the West is all about people coming together and either fighting each other or working together to survive. Right. And there's a very clear choice. And it's very clear in the West because it's a very distinct, archaic world in a lot of ways. But each person that comes to Independence, Texas has to choose, am I going to be a part of this community? Am I going to cooperate? Am I going to make friends or am I going to make enemies? And yeah. how how will that best serve me moving forward? You worked with Mark Shepard, right? I did. How was that? What a treat. What a treat. Did he did he have the English accent or did he put a southern accent on? Uh he gets a little bit Texan in our show. Does he get a little which is a lot do of you fun. do you get a little Texan? Do you uh do you have a little draw? This is the hardest thing for me, perhaps, about this show because I I was born in the South. And so when I first learned to talk, I had a southern accent. I'm not allowed to use it for this show. Why is that? Because I'm from Boston. I'm from Boston in the 1870s. And so even, even the Boston accent, as we know it today, didn't quite exist yet. So Pack your cat you know, and have it yet. Yeah, exactly. I can't even, you know, <laughs> I can't even that. go have that kind of fun. Right. And then everyone else around me is getting all Texas and I can't I can't participate in that either. So it's it's a it's a very it's a good exercise for me and I appreciate it. By the way, <laughs> you, you say that, you know. I mean, look, you picture, I picture you as not someone who's really edgy, the most edgy person. But as you get older, as I've talked to you over the years, now I'm seeing tattoos on you. Did you always have those <laughs> tattoos? Not always. I don't remember if I had these last time. We what do they say? About. What are they? This one, this one's my, probably my favorite one. It says not fragile. Oh. It's um, my, my boxing coach. Uh, he was one of our stunt coordinators on Shadowhunters. He's the man who taught me how to fight. Um, he used to always tell me that. Um, and it, it was a phrase that I found out later on meant a lot more to him than I ever realized. Um, and he's since passed and, oh, uh, yeah, he was gone far too soon and he was a very, very good man. Um, and taught me everything I know. Uh, I love him dearly, but it's just a little reminder of him and just as a kind of a thank you to everything that he gave me. That's beautiful. I like that. What's the other tattoo? 
Oh, goodness. Um, That's I drink whiskey. Well, this- Is that what it says? No, no. <laughs> I mean, it should at it this should, point. because you do, yeah. Um, God, so many. Um, this one is a, it's a replica of a necklace that my grandfather gave me when I was 16. It's the attitude meter of an airplane. Because he he built an airplane in his retirement and got his pilot's license and did all this. And when I was 16, he wrote me this beautiful card um, and said, you know, as long as you keep your wings straight, you'll be fine. And so I just moved away from home and it just, they're all, all of my tattoos are just little reminders of the people that I love and the things in my life that I, that are very important to me. Um, I always make myself wait a year before I get any, any new tattoo, because then at least I know if I still want it after a year. That's smart. It's I'll very smart. I'll probably be okay. Yeah. 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 It's hard though. It's hard. Who was the, uh, who told you when Walker was picked up, the prequel was picked up, who called you? I actually was on a plane when it happened. And so I didn't get a phone call. I was flying home from a, uh, a Comic-Con in um, Birmingham, actually. And I landed and my phone exploded. And I was getting all of these text messages of, where are you? What's going on? Why haven't we oh, heard from Jesus. you? From everybody. So from dramatic. My family, from the cast, from my team. My friend's like, what's wrong? Because they know. They know we, we'd all been anticipating this news and we were all waiting and to kind of see. We didn't know when <laughs> and if we would know. And I had, uh, my phone was just, I had to play catch up and I didn't even know what the news was. Who, for so what, what was it that, where it, 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 you knew that, Hey, I got this. Was it a text I, message that you knew? You're like, Oh, this is it. it <laughs> we have a chat with Larry. Um, we have a little, a little group text of like the guest and, and Larry, our director, cause he's been, he's been dad to all of us kids throughout this right. whole process. And it was one of the most transparent directors I've ever worked with. And I've never been more grateful. Um, but he, you know, when I saw that there were 75 messages and most of them with, positive uh, messages as opposed to, you know, crying emojis. Right, right, um, right. There's bottles of champagne as opposed to tears. I, I sort of put the pieces together. That's amazing. And did they just pick it up for one season at a time? It's just like, hey, you're picked up for the, the, the full season. Yeah, well, we didn't know. Um, I don't even know if we have official official word as to how many episodes we're doing and sort of all of that. But we found out that you know we got the we got season one and we're going to upfronts and which we just came back from and that was that was a really cool experience to sort of get to be there with you know the CW family and and see all the execs that I've known from Arrow and as I'm sure you know all of those folks incredibly well um and see Jared and Jensen and have you know us and I the saw Walkers you. and the Winchesters yeah. and all of us kind of getting to do our new thing and and be the next generation it's it's really beautiful that's amazing i mean how with all you're so busy you're always since i started <laughs> talking to you it's like god how does this girl do it how does this woman do it but I'm like, how do you, how do you date? How do you have time for personal relationships or anything like that? <laughs> do you have time to date? Do you have time to have, I mean, are you dating someone? Are you talking to someone? Are you interested in someone? You find time, you find time to have those, <laughs> you know, to, to have a personal life and to, you know, when, when the person you find it's, it's funny. I've it's something that I've learned in the last several years, especially with shadow hunters and arrow and this and everything else and comic cons and you know, the life we live. Yeah. You find those moments of personal life that are just simple, that are mean so much. Yeah. And you know, when the, when the people mean a lot to you, like family, like someone you're dating, it, it's, it's easy to find those pockets of time because you just do it. Really? It just seems like it'd be so hard. Like you're always out somewhere else in another state and another country. You're in London right now, right? Yeah. What are you doing I mean, in look, London? I, I sleep well on international flights. You know that. <laughs> I, uh, I, I do really well. I no, I'm, I'm lucky cause I'm tiny and I can curl up into a, into a corner and, you know, sleep even in the, in the worst of coach flights. Right. Um, yeah. But, you know, wait, it, wait, it, wait, wait. You're not taking coach anymore. Oh yeah. You still coach it up? Oh yeah. How often? Oh, most of the time. Not on if the I'm, studio's dime. Well, not on the studio. I mean, look, you know, there's there's union rules that that you know, there's they take very good care of us when right. it's for work, which is lovely, and yeah. I'm so grateful for that. But I don't know. I was never used to anything like that before, so you know, might as well just 
I'm perfectly fine curling up in coach. Do you get do you, do you get noticed a lot? Do people come Sometimes. up to you? Yeah, it's it always surprises me. And I um it happens more when I have red hair than when I have blonde hair. I like the blonde um, so, hair. Thank you. I do, I dig it. I'm digging it. Thank you. A little yeah. bit of little bit of arrow leftovers. Um <laughs> But no, I'll be I'll be back red soon because Abby's a ginger and you know we we lean full tilt into that, which I think there might be some fun Irish Bostonian things we might be having the opportunity to explore yeah, nice. later down the line. Inside of you is brought to you by Helix Sleep. Uh, if if you guys aren't uh, if you're tired all day, if you're struggling, a lot of times it has to do with sleep. And if you're not getting the right sleep, a good sleep at night, your day is most likely going to be, well, screwed. Uh, Helix makes unbelievable mattresses and so you can sleep all night. And they have this great quiz that you take. And believe me, it only takes 10 seconds. I mean, it's quick. Uh, And it just helps them figure out what mattress is right for you. I don't know if any other uh, company does this. It's pretty fascinating. The quiz takes two minutes at most to complete matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else? With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect for the way you sleep. Everybody's unique and Helix knows that. So they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium, and firm mattresses. Mattress is great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. And even a Helix Plus mattress for plus size sleepers. I took the Helix quiz. I am a medium uh, mattress sleeper. Um, I don't like it too soft. I don't like it too hard. Right there in the middle, like the porridge. Mm. Who who did the porridge thing? Goldilocks. That's exactly right. It's been awesome getting messages from all my listeners um, about how much Helix has really helped them. Um, So thank you, Helix, and thank you, listeners. Uh, If you're looking for a mattress, just take the quiz, order the mattress that you're matched to, and the mattress comes right to your door, shipped for free. You don't ever need to go to a mattress store again. Helix is awesome, but you don't need to take my word for it. It was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 and by GQ and Wired Magazine. Ryan, where can they go? Just go to helixsleep.com slash inside, take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free, and they'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash inside. That's helixsleep.com slash inside for up to $200 off and two free pillows. Now a word from our sponsor, better help. How well would you take care of your car if you had to keep the same one your entire life? That's how our brains work. So why don't we treat them that way? How we care for our minds affects how we experience life. So it's important to invest time and care into keeping them healthy. There are plenty of ways to support a healthy brain, learning a new language or taking power naps. There's also BetterHelp Online Therapy. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat-only therapy sessions. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy, and financial aid is available. You can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash inside. That's BetterHelp.com slash inside. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash inside. All right. So you, you don't mind flying coach. You could easily do it. Yeah. Really? You don't splurge and say, you know, it's on my dime. I'm going to go first class. So you, you kind of, you're a little cheap. Be honest. Sometimes I do. I mean, look, <laughs> you know, there's, I, the frequent flyer miles are a beautiful thing. And when you can upgrade, oh, you upgrade. Yes, and yes. That's great. But I'm, I don't know. I'm not, I'm generally not a very. You're like, down to earth is person. what you are. You're down to earth. From Missouri. You know, from Missouri, I, girl. I'm, I'm a country girl at heart, you know. Can take a girl out of the Midwest, but she's always going to end up back in a Western. That's true. That is very true. <laughs> uh, do you miss me a smoke? I do. 100%. You do? And 
I do. And it's one of those things that I got it. I got the opportunity to go back and, and pick her up again on the flash last year for they, they did this big Armageddon event where they brought in a bunch of fun characters as the world was ending, as it always is somewhere in the CW verse. And it was actually quite emotional. Um, cause you know, green arrow was one of the last jobs I did before the pandemic, um, barring the stand and a few other things. And getting to go back to the, you know, Vancouver Film Studios and put on the suit again. And it, it was such kind of a bookmark of, it felt like home. And it was the first time that in two and a half years of abnormal and weird and unknown environment that we'd all been living in, I just felt normal again. I felt like I was home. Can you just jump into that character again, Mia? Can you just jump right into it without thinking? Can you go from Abigail Walker to Mia? Probably. And I think it's just because I know there's characters that you just know when you live in their skin for years. They're just a part of you. And and that's that's what I find exciting. That's why I love doing television. That's yeah. why I keep coming back to it. What'd you do? Uh, you, so you don't mind guest starring. You'll always go back to be a guest star. You'll do whatever if you like it. Oh, yeah. Just put that green arrow signal in the sky and I'll come a running. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. Do you think you'll go back to it? Do you think they'll bring you back as Mia? I again? would hope so. I mean, I'm not dead. You know, I'm not dead on a slab yet, so right. I'm hoping. And plus, my brother's still missing. It's a whole thing. Like right. that, there's, I gotta, I gotta find the other Elicity baby. You know what I mean? There's like, there's, you know, can't have wanton queen children running around the Arrowverse. <laughs> do you get paid for doing if you do like Batwoman, Flash, and Supergirl all in one episode, like you're crossing over? Do you get paid your salary in each for each show? I don't remember. There's some. There's I'm, I'm something interested in, the in knowing that. Yeah. Where it, yeah. There's there's some way that they accounted for it in the contract where it was like fair to everyone, which I'm fine with. You know, as I'm, I mean, I'm, you know, me. I'm an economist. I'm a businesswoman at heart. But as long as it's fair, I'll, you know, I'll take it. You'll take it. What about, uh, you know, the spinoff? I think we talked about it. Maybe did we talk about it before? Probably briefly. Because they were, it was briefly, you know, they were, they, it was called Green Arrow and the, and the Cranberries. No, and the Canaries. That was it. <laughs> and the Canaries. And the Canaries. Yeah. And uh, it was a spinoff of Arrow and it didn't go. Now, this seems odd to me because it seems like everything you touch goes, works. All right. Now, how Not do everything. you, but how do you deal with rejection? How do you deal with that? Were you just kind of like, or was that a, kind of a, was that a sting? Did it hurt? That was hard, you know, again, because it's Mia and it's a character that I love so much. And, and, you know, we all worked so hard on that pilot and it's, that was such a, a, you know, it was such a journey. We all say that, but it was in between Crisis on Infinite Earths and the series finale of Arrow. We shot a backdoor pilot for this spinoff and somehow our crew was so incredible and they pulled it together and the writers and everyone was stretched so thin and made a pilot that was great and people really seemed to love it and we loved it and it was very well received. But it's just one of those things that you have to trust in the universe that if it's meant to be yours, it will be. And if it's not, there's something else out there for you. And I feel, I mean, as much as I would have loved to do that show and, and I still would love to continue Mia's journey moving forward. The fact that I, that Mia still exists in the world and I have a new story to tell with a new character that is equally as challenging and interesting and, and complex it's really exciting. Yeah. I can't complain. No. Did they let you see the pilot? I've seen bits of it. So I've then seen bits you, of it. Really? So what, aren't you curious yeah. that you want to see the whole thing? I do want to see it. Watching myself isn't my favorite thing. In really? The world. Wait a minute. No. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah. You don't like watching yourself. I don't. I don't love it. I like it for the learning experience of it. You know, I, I, I can enjoy it for the story, but I... I always want to, I always think there's room to, to improve and to learn from things you've done. And, and there's ways that you can keep pushing yourself to be better. And, yeah. you know, being the perpetual student that I am, I tend to see those things more than other things at times. Yeah. Um, but that's just part of it. And I've made my peace with it. You know, I've been doing this for years now. I've made my peace with the fact that, yeah, that's not the most comfortable thing for me, but I would rather 
be a little bit uncomfortable and get to enjoy everyone's work and what we put so hard in and in celebrating that together, then avoid it entirely just because of something in my head. Do you watch the episodes of um, Green Arrow that you were in and all the Batwoman, the crossovers? Do you watch every episode that you're in? I do because I try and live tweet. It's something uh, I love. We we started doing that with Shadow Hunters, and I just I fell so in love with that process because it's maybe it's the theater actor in me. I don't know, but getting to see the live reaction of folks on Twitter as things happen and things that we've kept so secret and hidden and worked so hard to curate so specifically as they hit the screen, then the internet kind of blows up in its own little way, and and people are excited or they're happy or they're upset or they're sad or they're scared or whatever it is. It's just nice to be able to share that and then to drop little behind the scenes things and have those conversations live with with the viewers. It's fantastic. Yeah, I want to know though what you look at, what you see when you watch yourself. What is it that you <laughs> what is it that like, you know, I'll watch myself and I go, "Oh, yeah. dude. Gosh, your head's enormous." <laughs> God, what is that? Is that a zit? Are you too old for a zit? How do you have a zit on your chin? Oh yeah. god. Why did you I'm hard on myself too. But yeah. do you do that or can you can you honestly sit back? Because sometimes I'll go, hey, you look pretty good. Hey, <laughs> that's good lighting. That must be really good lighting. Congrats on the lighting team. But do you look at yourself and it's hard to watch you because you, you know, you, your choices or you don't like how you look or how hard on you, are you on yourself and what is it you're hard on? That doesn't I, sound it, right. It depends. It really depends. And it, you know, it's one of those things that it's, it's depends on the scene or the day or the choice or the, the lighting or whatever it is. And, you know, I, I think a lot of it is thinking back through what my process was and going, wait, I was trying to figure out what take it is. I think it's the, the nerd in me. I'm trying to be like, was that that take or was that that take? And did I make this choice or where was my head when I was doing that? Or, right. or it's just, why did you, why do you make that face when you feel that thing? I don't know. Sure. <laughs> go for it. Maybe not the best choice, but you know, maybe don't make that choice next time. Well, wait a minute, time. wait a minute. Do you make faces and go, uh, what if it's a, a face that you really, a, a reaction that was real and most people see it as a real reaction, but you don't like the look of how you reacted. Well, if it's real, then I can't argue with it. You can't argue with it. Then that's, that's what I'm, that I'm doing my job. You know, <laughs> um, <laughs> honestly, I've made a fool of myself enough on camera in the course of my life. I'm I'm not bothered by looking silly. Did, in front you, did, of a did, bunch of people. did you watch you watch Walker <laughs> pilot, right? You watch that. I've seen bits and pieces of it. Bits yeah. and pieces. I would demand. Yeah. I am the lead of this show. I will watch it when I want to. I am the leader. And by the way, do is it is it a lot of, you know, because you did it on um, Shadow Hunters. But to be the leader, I mean, is there something that you go into every day, no matter if you're feeling down or you're feeling whatever, that you go into positive? Is there something you think about like, hey, I'm the leader here. I have a responsibility. I've got to change my attitude or I've got to think about things differently. I think that's part of it. You know, and if it's if there's anything I've learned from from watching other people in this position and, and from being in the position myself, it's you have a responsibility not only to you know play the character, but also to be the example on set and and be the example of how you want the set to run and what what environment do you want to work in and right. what environment do you want the people around you that you care about to be working in and do you want that to be a positive collaborative environment or do you want that to be a different kind of environment and it's your choice every day and now granted as an actor i control nothing and i can do nothing except put forth my best efforts to be a team player and to be a cog in the machine and make everyone's job easier in any way that I can. Because, you know, as actors, our jobs are made about as easy as they possibly can be. Um, given that, you know, we, we have a chair to sit in and we have someone who lays out our clothes and helps us put on our corset in the morning and makes sure we don't have stuff in our face unless we're supposed to, you know, and, and make sure we're lit well and the cameras and the, you know, we we're given a piece of tape to stand on and someone's there to make sure we're fed and know where the bathroom is and all of that stuff. I want one of those every day. Right. Of my life. I want nice. somebody to dress me. I want somebody to say, hey, you know, fix me up. <laughs> I want somebody to tell me what to do. Maybe that's a wife. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. It <laughs> don't would certainly know. make life so much easier. Yeah. Um, but but there's something to that where being in that position, 
you have new people coming in every day who, whether they're new actors or a, a day player in some other department, and everyone's there and you interact with most people on set every day. So if you can make someone's day a little bit easier or put a smile on their face or, you know, do or say something silly that makes them laugh, why not? Where do you film, Walker? We shot the pilot in uh, New Mexico. Is that where it's going to film now or? I think so. I mean, again, I'm an actor. Do I you don't like know New Mexico? Do you want to film there? Is it? I mean, it's kind of away from everybody. It is, but I sort of like being on location when it comes to diving into a series yeah. because you really get to build the family. Um, and we have a great cast. Everyone is so fantastic. It's it's uncanny how well we all just clicked from day one. Wow. And it's such such a gift, especially on a project like this where you're working long hours and you're covered in dust and there's wind and there's everything all day long. You're doing such emotional stuff where you really have to dive in head first with, you know, on a pilot, a group of practical strangers, uh, especially in the COVID era when chemistry reads are done on Zoom and you really don't get to meet until you're in it and you're working together. Um, it's, it's such a dream and New Mexico is such a beautiful, magical place and it does have to work for us. And, and that's, that's part of Walker and that's part of Walker independence in particular is that the town is a character. And so we get to Mm. really use the environment around us in every way. And Larry really leaned into that as well in the way that, you know, he shot it with, yeah, we're not going to shy away from the wind or the dust or the sun or any kind of harshness of this environment. Sounds like hell. part of it. That's going to get old, though. Don't you think that's going to get old? It's really nice and it's go, oh, it's so real. And then episode 18, you're like, good Lord, enough with the dust. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) That's what I would be doing. But also... Why not have a challenge? I guess. I mean, how many, uh, when will it air? Do you know? I think fall. Fall. I know we're on Thursdays. That the, the CW did their big schedule announcement, and we were part of that. Um, well, then you have to start but, shooting. Yeah. I think we start pretty soon. I'm not sure exactly when, but Jeez. again, this is all all brand new information it's all brand the new. last and couple you, of weeks. And you don't know how many episodes yet? I don't know that there's been an official stamp on it, so I don't want to speak out of turn. Right. I'm, you know, I, I'm still new. You're I gotta, still- I gotta, gotta stay put. I'm not, you know, I'm not Jared. I'm not executive producer. <laughs> well, well, you will be when they do a prequel to Abigail uh, Walker. Uh, there you go. The Shadow Hunters. Uh, how many episodes did you do that a year? We did our first season was 13, and then we did. Um, 20 and 20 and then we did a, a two episode series finale so all in all 55 episodes you see how though you could remember i know you can when you did 13 episodes how much nicer that was and easier and you had a bigger break and it wasn't as but when you do 20 episodes you're there for eight nine months and it's yeah. pretty taxing it's not you know it's not easy people say <laughs> being an actor is so easy and we're just but it, it's not it's not like it's not no. a glamorous job really no i mean look i've, I've had you're like, you say about the dust and the wind i might get you know, you, you say that it might become a challenge, but remember, I've been covered in blood and dust <laughs> you and have. You know, you slime have. and all sorts of stuff for the last seven, eight years. I'm used to it. I love it. I love being in the trenches. I yeah. love being my favorite days on set are being head to toe covered in blood, mud, sweat and tears. Gosh, you're a rarity. In the trenches. Yeah. So bring on the dust and the wind. All we are is dust and the... Do you remember that song? Do you remember that? (laughs) I would hope so. I mean, what are you? You're 26 now. Uh Uh-huh. Far more mature than I'll ever be at 26. No. Yep, you are. Uh, The new Shadowhunters podcast. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm joining your world now. What do you mean? The podcast world. Oh, the podcast world. Yes, yes, yes. Who approached you about this? So I started talking to uh, one of our producers um, at, at this company called Propagate about creating content and what else we could do working together just during the pandemic. What else can I do being a creative, someone who wants to be a multi-hyphenate, how can I get involved? And one of our producers turned to me and went, you did the show Shadow Hunters, and you seem to have a really 
big fan base for it. Like there's a there's a really big fandom that's still very active. And I went, oh, you have no idea. Um, and she said, well, what if you were to do a podcast? Maybe, you know, re-watching episodes or interviewing people. Hmm. And and we started talking and developing it. And, and I reached out to Dom and said, Dom Sherwood, who played Jace, my love interest on the show, I reached out to him and said, hey, would you want to go on this walk down memory lane? Would you want to go back and rewatch and and bring on some of the rest of the shadow fam and interview people and discuss this. And, and he was totally on board because this fandom is so incredible. And I know we've talked about it at length before, but you know, they've, they've done so many incredible things over the years and taken the show beyond or taken the, the fandom beyond us and beyond the show and beyond our characters and the story and created this beautiful community. And, you know, for me, shadow hunters was, age 19 to 23, it was such a formative part of my life and being able to look back on it now and relive that and see where all of the people that were so instrumental in that process are now and the amazing things they've done and be able to kind of continue to celebrate that family. It's really, really a wonderful experience. Return to the Shadows Mm -hmm. with Dominic Sherwood and Catherine McNamara. Indeed. Wow. When does this, is it already going? It is, yeah. We've started releasing episodes. I think we have about, mm, I want to say, seven or eight episodes out already. Really? Yeah. And so what do you do? Do you go back and watch the episode and then talk about it? So we alternate. So Dom and I will go through and the two of us will do a rewatch of an episode where we basically break down when the episode was shot, who directed it, who wrote it, what the synopsis is, and then kind of talk about it and share as many little tidbits Tidbits, and stories and all the stuff we've never been able to talk about before, basically. Would you go back Uh, to, uh, would you go back to the shadows? Would you go back to shadow hunters if they did like a TV movie or they wanted to do another season? uh, In a heartbeat. Really? In an absolute heartbeat. Yeah. You loved it that much. Uh, there's not much. Is there anything that you don't love or didn't like filming or didn't like working on without, t- you don't have to tell me, but has there ever been something that you're like, oh, I wouldn't do that again? Um, Maybe. I mean, there's things that have been more difficult than others, but not because of the story or because of the character or, or you know, mostly because of the people I worked with. It's it's all, I've been very lucky in that m- the majority of the experiences that I've had in this industry have been wonderful and learning experiences and, and things that I would go back to and people that I would go back to. I mean, maybe I'm just a stubborn optimist, but yeah. <laughs> I love what I do. Yeah, I um, wish I had then, that attitude. You know, so we'll, yeah, and so with the podcast, we'll do an episode of that, and then we'll alternate it with bringing on someone, whether it's a cast member or a director or a designer or something that that played a, a part in the show. And usually we try and pair that with the episodes. And so it kind of gives us a chance to not only relive the episodes, and, and there's some folks that are watching the show for the first time right. with our podcast, which is exciting. Um, but then we also get to, to give a little more in-depth and give – other folks a chance to tell their stories and share their perspective. And it's, it's been really fascinating to get to talk to people that we know so well and hear stories we've never heard before. When you get busy with Walker though, how are you going to have time to do that? Because I don't need much sleep, Michael. How many hours of sleep do you sleep? How many hours of sleep do you sleep? (laughs) Uh, I, I generally on average get about four to six a night but that's all I've ever needed. How do you have no, ba- I know you're no bags under your eyes, unless this is just perfect lighting, but yeah, you're, you don't need a lot of sleep. You can go four to six hours and you're, you have a ton of energy for the next 15 hours. Yeah. That's, that's how I function best. I mean, I can function on less sleep and have, but <laughs> to, to be at my best, that's, that's what I try. And, and you're learning them. lines pretty quickly. Like you could learn them in a night if you had to. It's a muscle for me. The more I do it, the more, um, the further into a season I get, the the faster that process becomes. And I think it, it becomes a rhythm, as you know. I mean, yeah. you know this. I don't have to tell you. Well, but making me. television becomes a rhythm. It does. And you kind of get into the machine and you can just it's, become yeah. a part of that process. It's really hard in the beginning. It's like, okay, it's like, oh, I got to learn this. And then you're not ready. And you just have to work at it. And then all of a sudden by episode five, six, seven, you're like, okay, it, now I know this character. Now it's coming to me. It's right. easier. Yes, I agree with you on that. Yeah, you kind of just fall into it at a certain point. And um, 
it's it's this is again why I love television because you play these characters for so long and you get to live in their skin and they take on a physicality and a life and a space of their own and it's it's exciting to get to build that and build those relationships and build that world and then just sort of set it free. Does Cat McNamara ever cry? Does she get emotional? Yeah. She does. Yeah, I mean look, I've got I'm you know I'm I'm a, a bleeding heart at best because I I don't know I I I care very deeply about the people and the things that I care about and and you know I'm I'm a very positive person but I'm not unfeeling right no I didn't I didn't mean it like that yeah <laughs> I just meant like are I you do cry I cry I cry uh, many yeah. things I mean, I'm not constantly but- crying. But half the time, the things I cried are happy things because I'm really? just a big old softy. You're yeah. a big old softy. Yeah. Um, the new Hallmark. I mean, I'll cry at a Hallmark what? commercial, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Hallmark, you did another Hallmark movie, right? Yeah, I Love did. Classified. Mm-hmm. And what's so different about this from other Hallmark movies? Hallmark took has been taking some big steps in the last couple of years with being more open and more – you know, implementing more kind of diverse storylines into their their films and their TV shows. And and it's really beautiful to see, you know, them taking steps to to meet the world that we live in today. Um and I was I read this script and I thought it was in the same way that Schitt's Creek did the whole, you know, love the wine, not the label sort of thing. They told a story about love and letting love surprise you and and being open to love in whatever way that comes whether it be fixing you know some some emotional damage within your family from the past or being open to romance for the first time or being open to dating someone you never even thought about dating and then ending up in a beautiful love story wow well put well put i think you're maybe describing yourself too uh maybe Maybe. Hmm. Are you still tight with your folks? Yeah. Uh, yeah. My my family means a whole lot to me, and I um, I really, really, really love just the fact that um, I always talk about this, but I I was raised in a family of so many women who never chose between career and family. It was never, you know, you, you you could be anything you wanted to be and any combination of things you wanted to be if you were willing to to put in the time and the energy and the work. And having that sort of open possibility presented to me from a very young age, I think was really beneficial. And so I'm, you know, I'm forever grateful for that, but surrounded by some really incredible, hardworking folks. Who's the first person who uh, texts you or calls you after maybe an episode of a television show that you're on or a movie you're doing? Uh, I usually will hear from, aside from like the cast that I'm working with, um, I usually hear from either my mom or my grandparents because they're so sweet. And are they, they in Missouri? Will, are they in Missouri? Yeah. Do they have that accent? Do they have a Southern accent? Do they like, we really love what you were doing. Not quite Southern, but there, there's a Missouri character. Yeah. To, to a voice that I, I don't really have. Just I've Midwest, kind of, Midwest feel. It's, yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. Midwestern. But but I'll hear from them, and it's it's so great because nothing phases any of them. But it's been a lovely thing to see, you know, for, for someone who comes from a family of science and medical professionals, for them to get excited about this as a career and and as something, you know, with longevity and something that is a profession. And um and they get excited, especially about things like this. You know, if I'm doing a Western, they're so excited. Right. Do you ever seek approval? Is there someone that doesn't always give you that little, hey, you were really good, or you just kind of want to impress one day, you want to get a message from them, or is it, are they, you know, that are tough to please? I mean, I think I'm I'm my own harshest critic, uh, honestly. Yeah. Um, I mean, there have been those people in my life, but I don't know, something I think life has taught me in, in a myriad of ways is that you have to be okay with who you are and you have to know that in your own heart, you're doing what's right and you're doing what's true and you're making choices that are 
going to be good and and be good for your life and make you happy. And as long as you're not hurting anyone else in that process, that's okay. Are you singing still? Are you still writing music? Bits and bobs. I mean, I've been busy. I've been busy doing other things. I've been busy. But but write Um, a song for Walker, the prequel. I guess you couldn't because, I mean, you could. Do they use modern music? Do they use kind of sort of modern music with the show or do they... Is it there's a little bit of both. There's a little, a little bit, bit of both. both. Okay. Actually, the music on the show is amazing between the score and the music choices that they've made. I mean, it's CW. They always make great music choices. It's such a huge part of what they do. But um, but Larry, our director, again, was so meticulous about music. And I think it's just it's just great. I'm I'm glad, you know, with what I've what I've seen and what I've heard, it's it really adds so much to the show. You even see it in the trailer. Um, but yeah, I've been doing little bits and I mean, even that was something we loved so much about the podcast, um, is that our, our friend Alex Kinsey, who's an incredible musician and an incredible, uh, singer songwriter, he wrote our theme song and I got to sing on it. And it's, I mean, it's, you know, it's a podcast theme song. It's 20 seconds, but being back in the studio for 13 minutes recording, it was great. That's awesome. Yeah. It was, it sucks. Cause if you were here, I'd say come sing on my album because we just recorded 14 new tracks and i'm like i really love the songs and you know i'd love for you to do some harmonies but you're not available you're not around i mean how could you do it you don't have time you're not in la next time next, next time. time if i have more of a heads up let me know next album I'll come do it. next album <laughs> all right this is called shit talking with cat mcnamara oh um, my who calls you cat who calls you Catherine? oh it depends there's it's funny because when I grew up in Missouri, um, everyone called me Catherine. I was always Catherine. Then I moved to New York and I was doing a show with Catherine Zeta-Jones and there were uh, two other Catherines so you were Kat. in the show as well. And one of the actors pulled me aside my first day and goes, there's too many Catherines here. You're going to be Katie Mac. So in New York, <laughs> Katie I'm Katie. Mac. Really? York, everyone calls me Katie or Katie Mac. Yeah. And then I moved to LA and I was working with someone and they went, I don't really like Katie. I'm going to call you Kat. And so then in LA, I've always been Kat, but it's, it's, it's wild because now there's certain people in my life that call me Catherine only. And my family calls me everything under the sun. And, and so I sort of just let people choose and it's, it's fun. All right, Katie. I think it's a fun yeah, you can call me. I like Katie Mac. Nobody Katie calls Mac? me Katie Mac anymore. All right, Katie Mac. We'll go with Claudine with Shit Talking with Kat McNamara. These are questions that my top tier patrons get to ask. If you want to join Patreon and support the podcast, patreon.com slash inside of you. I'll write you a message afterwards. Claudine, you, you kind of answered this question. Claudine says, how was it returning to the Arrowverse and playing Mia Green Arrow again? It was great. And and actually, I can I can speak a little more to that in that um, – you know, Eric and and all of the writers on Flash picked up right where we left off. I mean, a year later, as it were, but right where we would have left off. And it it felt as though I was reading an Arrow script. It felt like Mia. It sounded like Mia. And Mia has such a very particular balance of brooding um, anger and sarcasm. <laughs> and it's a very hard balance to strike sometimes and not let it go too far either way. And in reading the script, it was, it was, it just felt right. And I was so happy to just be home. I love it. Lisa H. What was it like portraying the character of Julie Lowry in the remake of the stand, <laughs> such an iconic miniseries and novel. And did you see the original miniseries prior to being cast? If so, how did you think they compared? Yeah, I I love the original miniseries. I mean, I'm a huge Stephen King fan. Mick Garris came, who's the director of the original miniseries, worked on Shadowhunters back in the day. So I I knew it quite well. And um, playing Julie, she's quite a polarizing character. And I was... I was pretty nervous stepping into those shoes because I I was hopeful to maintain that separation between self and the character. Um, Don't be a Julie. That's all I keep saying to people. But (laughs) just the fact that she is this personification of narcissism and hedonism and gets to have fun in a world where so many people are being so earnest and really fighting for humanity. Right. Julie's just living her best life covered in <laughs> fur and jewels and sequins and drinking champagne and doing whatever else she's doing. 
Um, and I also, you know, to be surrounded with such incredible actors, like Nat Wolf was my partner in crime for the majority of it. Henry Zaga, I got to do some great stuff. Alex Skarsgård was in the majority wow. of, you know, the scenes that I was in. It was amazing did to you get, get to, to meet play Stephen? with those folks. Did you meet Stephen King? I didn't. And I'm so gutted. Oh, God, I'd love to meet Stephen King. Somebody got me his autograph once at a book signing, but that's it. He signed oh, wow. Pet Cemetery, I believe, for me. I have it up there, I think. Oh, that's awesome. Where is it? No, no one cares, Michael. Uh, Nico, what's the most common question you get when it comes to your character on Shadowhunters? Ooh, um, I think I think the most common question I get is uh, what what quality are you do you find most similar to to yourself and Clary, and um, you know, my answer to that is always uh, that that there's this loyalty that Clary has to the people that she loves. And this, Clary always had this beautiful willingness to find hope in every situation. And, and it wasn't the end unless there was always a way to figure it out. There was always a solution. There was always some glimmer and some ember of hope existing in who she was. And I, I find myself having that same quality. I could see that. I could see it. Bob K. What classic film would you remake and star in? Ooh, that's tough. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it would ever need remaking, but one of my favorite classic films of all time is Gilda with Rita Hayworth from 1946. I believe Didn't see it. It's like the end of noir, and I just love Rita Hayworth so much. And maybe not remaking that film, but to do a film of that era and to, to bring noir back I would be see fantastic. It. I could see you doing it. Leanne, what is something people would be surprised to learn about you? Mm, um, surprised to learn about me. That I, you have a, that you can just, you could just snap. And just go off <laughs> no. on someone. No, no, no. No, I'm directionally challenged. Is that is what, that surprising? Ah, uh, so in other words, when someone's going to make a left, you'll go right. I just get. I have no sense of direction. Yeah, it's I'm not really great awful. with it. I'm not great with it. I know left and right and stuff like that, but I'm not great. I'm not great. Yeah, I'm. I'm generally 180 degrees off consistently. If I if <laughs> I have a feeling that it's left, it'll almost always be so right. So if I asked you where a certain country was or so you're probably not good with that stuff. I I would I'm geography I'm iffy with but but you know if you ask me how to get somewhere even if I've been there before I'll probably get lost. But you know how I look at it I always find the silver lining. You know this. I have a lot of adventures along the way. Good for you. That's a perfect <laughs> way to think. I like it. <laughs> Lena Ann, if you weren't an actress what could you picture yourself doing for a living? So if if I could still be in the entertainment industry, I would probably direct. Um, I've been shadowing and learning and and dipping my toe in the water for the last couple of years. And, and it's something that I very much would like to do. Um, I also started writing during the pandemic, good. which it, I've, I've written, you know, nonfiction things over the years, but but writing and telling stories and doing things in that way. It's new, but I love it. Um, but if not, I would probably go back to economics. I, I Before I was an actor, I wanted to go into developmental economics. And didn't you, yeah. Didn't you yeah. try to get, didn't, weren't you going to get your master's degree from John Hopkins? Yeah. 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 I took, I took a bit of a sabbatical from that, um, you know, during work. Right. Right. I, I do want to finish that up. You do. You really want to finish yeah. that. I do. Look at you. I mean, you graduated high learn. school. You graduated high school when you were, what, 14? Yeah. Uh -huh. You were homeschooled. And then you graduated with a college, I mean, with a degree, but by the time you were 17. Mm-hmm. That about wraps it up for today. <laughs> um, I don't know. I love school. I love learning. I know. And I love, you, do, but... you know, I I just, any anytime I can learn or glean something from a uh, an experience or a person or a book or anything. I, I try and do it. It's what life's all about. What's your Instagram? At cat.mcnamara. And Twitter? Cat underscore McNamara. You know, I always tell this, but my uh, Instagram is the Michael Rosenbaum, but my Twitter, my name was too long. So it's at Michael Rosenbaum. 
they couldn't fit them. <laughs> they couldn't fit an F and A in there. So it's Rosenbaum. Why not? Yeah, Throw got, a pun in there. It's got character. Yeah. Yeah. Katie Mack, this has been great. I love it's been a long time coming. I'm glad I got to talk to you finally. You look fantastic. Your attitude makes me want to have a better attitude. It does. Well, good. You just have I a hope- great attitude towards everything in life. And it's just like, I, I you know, we should all wake up and, and, and you know, act like you do and, and do the things that you do to get motivated and have the gratitude and all these things. I feel like you're very grateful and you're very hardworking and you deserve everything you get. Oh, well, thank you. I mean, and, and you're right. That's what it comes down to for me. It's, I'm I'm grateful. I I feel very fortunate and and very humbled by you know the the opportunities that um, life has put in front of me. You know, whether it's the people I get to work with and the stories I get to tell and the people I get to meet along the way. Um, and it's I, if I can wake up every day and remember that gratitude and be excited to do whatever it is that I have to tackle that day makes it all the better what's the uh, walker prequel called the walker prequel is called walker independence walker independence will probably air you're hoping in the fall so you guys mm-hmm. tune into that it'll be on the cw mm-hmm. any further questions i would direct to jared padalecki no jared i don't, padalecki. I don't want to throw him under the bus yeah, like you can throw him under the bus i'll call him <laughs> no I'll call him i mean he's my grandson he's got to help a grandma out <laughs> You know, <laughs> he's got to help his great, 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 great grandma out. <laughs> Katie Mack, I, I appreciate you. What were you going to say? I said, oh, he makes a great, 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 great grandma proud. Yeah, good, 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 good. Uh, thanks for doing this. Thanks for taking the time. I know you're busy. I love you. I wish the best for you. All the best to you. Bye. Bye. See ya. She's just very likable. Yeah. And also just busy. I've and never on, met anyone that busy. On her shit. She's on her shit. I mean, talk about someone who doesn't get anxiety, really. I mean, we, we talked about things, but um, she's she's a rare breed. Yeah, She just goes and works so hard, and uh, it pays off. Um, people like her. They like her. I like her. Did you like her? I like her, too. Yeah, good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank everybody again for listening to the podcast and sticking with us. I know you're here for Kate, uh, Catherine McNamara. Jeez. Keep sticking around uh we appreciate it watch on youtube there's also youtube clips uh you can listen anywhere you get your podcasts and um write a review it it tremendously helps the podcast when you write a review uh and join patreon patreon patreon.com slash inside of you also thank you for listening to talkville Mm. our new podcast that ryan's a part of Mm -hmm. and uh we just keep getting through these episodes and um it's a lot of fun we watch every Smallville episode, and then we talk about it and critique it. And sometimes we have guests. We just had Kristen Kruk, uh, which was lovely. And um, We'll say critique and celebrate. We s- critique, celebrate. Yeah. I shit on it occasionally. Sure. But I don't really shit on it. A fan said I shit on it. But I just <laughs> give my honest opinion on things. I'm the harshest critic. But uh, <laughs> check out Talkville, T-A-L-K-V-I-L-L-E. You can watch on YouTube, subscribe, and anywhere you get your podcasts, follow us at Talkville Pod and Talkville Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, Thank you for listening. And uh, right now, we're going to get into the top-tier patrons. These are the patrons that uh, give a lot to the podcast to keep it going. They really support it, and uh, I could not do it without them. So without further ado, here we go. You ready for this, Ryan? Uh, I'm ready. You hydrated? I'm hydrated now, man. Great. All right, here we go. Nancy D. Nancy D. Mm-hmm. Leah S., Sarah V., Little Lisa, y- Yukiko, Jill E., Brian H. By the way, Yukiko, I saw that you came on the Zoom and then you left last week. We had a big patron Zoom, a top tier patron Zoom, and I saw Yukiko's name and then she vanished. So I was sad to see you go. Jill E., Brian H. Brian was there. Nico P, Brian, Robert B, Jason W, Sophie M, Kristen K, Raj C, Joshua D, CJP, Jennifer N, Stacy L, Jamal F, Janelle B, Kimberly E, Mike E, Eldon Supremo, 99 More, Ramiro, Santiago M, Chad W, Leanne P, Janine R, Maya P, Maddie S, Belinda N, Chris H, Dave H, Sheila G, Brad D, Ray H, Tabitha T, Tom N, Liliana A, Talia M, Betsy D, Chad L, Marion, Meg K, Big Stevie W, Angel M. <laughs> That's correct. 
That Angel is Mound. Angel Mound. You won't forget Rhiannon. C. Correct. Corey. K. Dev Nexon. Michelle. Mm-hmm. Uh, D. A. E. A. A. We're not there yet. Jeremy. V again. V. Nope. Jeremy C. D- there's two Michelles yeah. and two Jeremys. Shit. Andy. Dwyer. T. Oh. Gav. Venator. David. C. All right. John. C. Riley. John B. Riley. Oh. <laughs> Brandy. Uh, Tough one. D. Brandy D. Right. Yavor. Camille. M. S. S. The. C. Those, they're the C, but the the new one. The, the what? The, remember you asked if there were two of them? The ch. The chief. The chief. Joey M. M. I oh, is that what that the C? One. Did the C become the chief? I don't know, but it's the chief. Joey mm. M. Design OTG. Eugene and Leah. Nikki. R. Just Nikki Glazer. Think Nikki Glazer. No, Nikki G. Corey. Katie. Nope. B. Heather. L. Correct. Jake. S. No, remember I said Jake. He's got a father who's crazy. Jake. B, Jake Busey. Oh, right. Megan, remember you said something? <laughs> Megan T. T, correct. Mel. S. Correct. Orlando. C. Correct. Caroline. R. Correct. Christine. S. Correct. Sarah. Nope. Remember Sarah Smile? Oh, S. Or Sarah, Sarah Smile. Sanderson? Oh, Sarah S. Eric. H. Yes. Jennifer. N. No. S. Remember, these are three in a row. Jennifer. R. And then Shane. R. And then Emma. R. Correct. Jeremy. V. Correct. Andrew. M. Correct. Robert. S. G. Oh. Zatoichi. I don't know. 77. All right. Andreas. S. N. N. Oracle. Chris. R. Yes, correct. Michael. Remember I said his name, the actor? Michael. Oh, F. Correct. Karina N. Samantha. Don't know. W. Michelle. D. Correct. Amanda. R. Correct. Lovecraft. E. Uh, Lovecrafty. E. Lovecrafty. All right. Uh, Amanda. S. Correct. And Jen. Gen B. I'm right. I'm I'm impressed. I'm impressed. You nailed a lot of them. This is this Nama. is the end of it because you always nail the first half, as everybody knows. But now you're starting to squeeze in some of the second half. N- mnemonic devices. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. But we're doing it. We're doing it. Um, guys, I thank you for listening to the podcast. As I say over and over again, hopefully you don't get tired of it. Uh, keep listening. Keep supporting. Join Patreon if you want. And. Uh, from uh, Michael Rosenbaum here in the Hollywood Hills of California. I'm Ryan Davis. A little wave to the wide camera. Uh, thanks, Jason, our editor. Thanks, Bryce, our producer. Thanks, Cumulus, for uh, you know working hard in this podcast. Thank you, Ryan. Couldn't do it without my main man, thick and thin, right here. <laughs> here he is, Ryan Tayas. Show him some love. And uh, we will see you next week. Be good to yourselves. <laughs>